In this episode, what we're, what we're having a look at is the way in which um, we need a focus for dialogue. Now, quite often a focus for dialogue is a problem or an issue that's going to be discussed or something that needs to be created. Um, and that's fine. But in many circumstances, um, we would use objects in order to stimulate discussion, to get people to compare and contrast and so on. And that's what we're going to do in this, in this episode. Um, so what we're trying to exemplify here is the use of objects as a stimulus for dialogue and a focus for dialogue. And we're also trying to look at the ways in which we might justify and reason uh, around the use of objects. Um, so that's the purpose of this short piece. Okay, Nicola is going to lead this. Okay. So, can everybody see the screen? Yeah. See the image that I'm sharing there? Okay, so does anyone want to have a guess about what this is that we're looking at? What kind of thing? Paul, I'd hazard a guess, a guess at a microscope. Yes, it is a microscope. It's a, um, a very old microscope. This is a drawing of a microscope that actually belonged to the famous scientist Charles Darwin. And when we think about scientific equipment, quite often we might think of this kind of very expensive, maybe difficult to use tool. But actually, scientific equipment is all around us and we use it all the time in everyday life. So my challenge is for all of you to take three minutes to find examples of different kinds of scientific equipment from around your home. And in three minutes time, we'll come back together and compare what we've all found. Okay, take your marks. Off you go. Okay, so we've had three minutes. Let's see what scientific equipment we came up with. So I'm just gonna go across the screen in the order it is on my computer. Um, and I'd like you to tell me what you've bought, what piece of scientific equipment and why you've chosen it. So why you think it counts for this activity. So Kate, you're first on my screen. Can you tell us what you've got? I've got some uh, headphones that I use or with my telephone. Um, and I, the reason I chose these is because I thought of the way in which I use them to hear things. And I felt that there's a lot of science in that. I, I don't particularly understand the science behind how I get music and voices through these little buds, uh, but I'm very respectful of the science. So that's why I chose those. And I wondered whether some of you might be able to shed some light on <laughs> how they work. <laughs> So I get a sort of a sound and communications. Yeah, science. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So Paul, you're next. Okay, this is a bit of a cheat because I actually happen to have a USB microscope, um, which is a, a small microscope that you plug into your computer um, using a USB connector. So, um, so I've got this little microscope, which I bought mainly to look at things in my pond uh, or from my pond. Um, so that's what this is. So given Darwin's microscope, I thought I, it made me think of this one. So. Yeah, okay. And USB, are your um, headphones USB compatible, Kate? Uh, no, they're not. They just work in my phone. Uh, okay, so different ways of connecting yeah. with other devices. But yeah, they do need to be, again, like the microscope needs to be attached to something else in order yeah. for it to work. They don't work on their own. So they're sort of what you'd like kit, isn't it? That you attach to something else in order to make it work. Yeah. Okay, Amelia, you're next. Um, so I found a set of like m different measuring spoons um, of different sizes. So I thought you could somehow compare maybe volume or something. Um, obviously they're very useful in baking if you've not got scales. Um, yeah, they've got lots of different measures on them. So st standard measures. Yeah. So they can, they can, you can use them relative to each other but also you could use them, um, people could make a recipe using those. 
Okay, great. Um, Amaris, what did you find? Um, so I found um, a kitchen scale, which I use all the time in the kitchen to weigh things, but I thought it also might be um, scientific because you can use it to track weights over time and see how things are changing. Um, and it's um, it will convert for you between grams and ounces, for example. So there's lots of different measurements. <laughs> And um, I have also got um, a couple of measuring things, um, although not so much kitchen, or one was a kitchen item. This one, not so much. Um, I have a tape measure here. So it's got um, inches and centimeters. So metric and imperial like yours, at, um, Maris. And I also found a kitchen thermometer. So, and that's also in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, and a final thing, um, not used for measurement, but um, washing up liquid, which I'm thinking of as a scientific um, object in that it uses a chemical process um, to stick to the grease and things on plates and to pull them off using water. So there's a chemical reaction going on whenever we do the washing up. Okay, so a really interesting range of objects there, and we started to look at um, some similarities between some of the things that you found, some of the objects, and um, some of them are different. I'm wondering if anybody could come up with some groups that we could categorize these objects into. So we've said they're all part of the scientific equipment group, but can we divide them within that does anyone and hold the objects up just so we can be reminded what we're <laughs> working with can anyone suggest any any groups based on what they can see you could sort of split them into a group something to do with um some sort of measurement mm -hmm. um compared to sort of like headphones you wouldn't necessarily measure something with yeah um, so measurements i'm guessing measuring spoons and cups definitely yeah and the scales could be a sort of measuring and the same with the tape measure yeah um thermometer would you say it's not measuring size but it's measure i think it's a measurement of a sort yeah measurement of of uh, temperature so we've got measuring and non-measuring okay did anyone uh, other groups i think measurement's a really good one um, just on a really basic level, um, the scale as you have Amelia's um, measuring spoons are made out of plastic and um, Kate's headphones are also made out of more plastic. So just at a really basic what they're made out of, yeah. there's different. Yeah. yeah, so we could divide them um, not just in terms of their functionality, but in terms of the actual material that they're that they're made from as well, and that's easier to tell, I know, from the objects you're holding in your hand. But some we can tell by looking as well. Great. I thought Any there other? was a. Oh, did you I thought there one? was a and for the for both the headphones and for this, there was a there was a, an enhancing of the senses um, element to this that actually um, you are you're using headphones in order to in order to be able to increase volume to be able to hear things better for this you'll be able, you're being able to see things that you can't possibly see um, with the naked eye or that if you could you'd be very clever um, and so these these two things in my mind seem to go together so I was pointing over there because Kate's to my left on this um, so um, so yeah I think the the headphones and this have something to do with enhancing uh, enhancing the senses um, and being able yeah. to uh, do things that we couldn't ordinarily do um, yeah. uh, with uh, with just just with the use of the senses. Um, yeah. So kind of like working from the physical body, but adding something. And yeah. I think that's really interesting when we compare that with measurement, because of course, um, early in early times, measurement was all about comparisons with the human body. That's why we still talk about feet. You may, might have heard of the idea of cubits, people measuring with the front of their arms. Um, and so our standard measurements that we have now have come out of 
really those are um are based on this similar thing kind of extensions to the body so i think that's a really interesting link from the senses to to measurement that we've got here